uh, yield chains shall lengthen. Return of the salmon. Our people traveled in the seasons, so every system had a different time. So therefore, our people understood that they would have to move with that time, with that season, and they just followed the salmon. And I suppose that's how they got the name Salmon People. The devastation that happened in our territory caused by over-exploitation by multinationals who came into our territory to harvest those resources. They devastated, they wiped out everything without leaving anything for the people. And our people had to rebuild what was left. This creek was pretty well a dead creek. Our forefathers, our elders had the vision that that river could be rebuilt because our people have always been here for thousands of years and they will remain here for thousands of years. We knew that if there was just one salmon left, we could rebuild those stocks. And the salmon have come back tenfold. In the beginning, from less than a thousand fish to 25,000 fish. And this year, they're back in millions. And it's proved that uh, the vision of our forefathers was true. There's millions of salmon now. So it's unbelievable, uncomprehensible. Cecil Creek is less than a kilometer long and to see this many fish back in, it's all part of our elders' vision. And to see this many fish come back where you can actually almost walk on the backs of the salmon is just incredible. There's a spiritual connection to this river. It's part of who we are as salmon people. There's a, there's a spiritual connection. And by, by nourishing and taking care of it, uh, we can ensure that there's fish for our kids and, and their unborn children. They always say that, that when we start a project or we look at things, we set the table for the things to happen in the future. And I believe we're now witnessing some of what's been set on our table and the abundance of fish that continue to keep coming into this little stream. There's something beyond science that's working here. I believe that we were going to scientifically bring some salmon back. And I thought some numbers of salmon, but this year, the, the numbers are staggering. Up to 100,000 salmon are going to visit Seashell Creek and up to a million salmon in the Jervis and Salmon Inlet from salmon stocks that were virtually decimated 30 years ago. With the vision of our elders and the vision of people like Dave Carter from Regional Power and Capstone, they were able to rebuild that creek and develop a system of uh, clean energy. This structure has both the form of the Coastal Salish two log pole structure and the function of a modern hydroelectric plant. The powerhouse actually was in recognition of the elders' interest in having their cultural and traditional values protected in the area. There's a long history of people within the Coastal Salish community coming out here to train as future warriors within their society. So it's, it's got tremendous cultural history. So we were very careful and cognizant of that when we, when we built the project to try and minimize the environmental footprint, to try and maximize the hydraulic potential, and to try and enhance the environment where possible. One of the things that's, that's really uh, helped Seashell Creek along is the building of the spawning channel. Seashell Creek probably lost a lot of its estuary with the log dump sort and, and build up, so it was channelized. And uh, by creating more habitat, it allows the juveniles uh, to rear in there throughout the winters and, uh, and to feed in there. It, uh, so it creates uh, more habitat and uh, it's very productive habitat. What we thought we would do is try and make it as natural as possible and try to mimic nature to the best of our abilities using science. You know, it's gravity fed from the tail race that you see off to the back end of the project. The banks were all shielded uh, with large boulders, large rock to, to protect them from erosion. But I think that for the most part, uh, from the very early stages of the development, for whatever reason, the salmon appeared to really like what had been done there. The riffles, the alcoves, the side channels, the hiding area, root wads were used for young of the year coho that would uh, smolt out in the stream. It's just, I think, it is a testimonial that if you try to do things right, 
you sometimes get it right. And I think Seashell Creek is a, a living legacy of that part of enhancement that really was right from the start. You can't tell that man's touched this area. And it's nice to witness that, uh, well, I guess as you can see by all the fish that are here, you know what I find awesome to be able to be a part of is, is that we, we mix science with culture and history of, of what our people have done. All of what our elders have told us for hundreds of years and from generation to generation on why we need to, to uh, protect Mother Earth, why we need to protect all of these fish because it's a balance that we all need to have in order for us to feel good about who we are and what we're doing. There's a lot more to uh, just raising fish, uh, making sure that the ecosystem, the eagles, the bears, the, the wolves, it's so great to see those animals that we share this land with uh, thriving and uh, the bears are having a, a field day here. Uh, they're, they're getting their uh, bellies full and yeah, the Mayuk. Yeah, they're well fed, eh, Duane? Yeah. And you know, I, I heard one, uh, one person say they're not seeing any eagles at the dump because the rivers are full. So that's what puts a smile on our face. Seashell Creek, it's probably got one of the highest densities of salmon in the province and possibly even in the country. Quite an accomplishment with the band and the, the stewardship of our territory. We're overloaded, but we're happy. And there's more to come. With all these fish, uh, they're gonna die after they spawn. And it also creates more nutrients and bugs and fertilization for the, for the, the forest as well, as well as the stream bed. It helps the shellfish. Uh, the nutrients provide uh, a good food source for the shellfish. It also creates a food source for the bottom fish, the crabs and uh, the prawns. And so it's, it's all part of the, the natural cycle and, and evolution that uh, really creates a healthy ecosystem. We know that the land is part of us and we're part of the land. We have to express our gratitude to the land and all of its resources. And that's why we take on the responsibility of sustainability of all the elements and all the resources on our territory. Without that, our people wouldn't, would not exist. For the longest time, when I first got involved with Seashell, I was thinking, oh, there must have been porpoise in Porpoise Bay, uh, where there were very few salmon and no porpoise left. And now one of our operators, who's a member of the Seashell Nation, uh, made a comment to me a couple of years ago that in his 54 years up to that point, he had never seen a, a dolphin in there, and he'd seen one for each of the last four years since the fish started coming back in, in larger numbers. And I understand that uh, even orcas have been spotted in the inlet. It's not just sustainable or renewable in that you know, we use the water and it will rain again and we get to use it again. But this is a regenerative project. It regenerated returning things to where they were before we started you know, overfishing and over forestation and you know, using the land uh, in overabundance and we're returning it to the way it was. I, I remember sitting down with uh, the late Clarence Joe and his brother Gilbert Joe. They said we needed to do this throughout the entire territory and that's part of who we are as the salmon people. We have a spiritual connection and, and we want to look after this uh, resource and be able to pass this resource as stewards onto uh, our next generation in better shape than what we received it at. There is, I think, hope in all areas of the environment where, where even small improvements can, can create big differences. It's a sign of um, how our people survive, similar to the salmon. No matter how devastated we were, we were able to survive the circumstances, and that is a part of the sea shark people. I always remember a story that a, an elder told me in Stalo, come walk with us to see why we're still here. And I believe you're walking with us and understanding why we're still here. In a holistic approach, this is one of the great global projects. This is one of those projects that should be used as an example of how things can work.
We claim that we're one and the same with the salmon. They sustained us and they sustained our land. And uh, every year when the new salmons returned, there was such respect. There were potlatches, there were dances, and there was celebration. And we're trying to recapture that now, the, the, the celebration of the salmon.